Hey everybody, my name is Jason, also known as Pirate JC, and welcome to part eight of the mystery demo tutorial series. If you've been following along in the series, you know that this is a series where we have built a demo together step by step, but I haven't told you what it is that we're building. By now you have some kind of an idea, but there's still a lot of mystery left to unravel in the final two videos. In the last video, we took our underwater scene with the caustics projected into it and we added atmospherics. We added fog and a background and we extended the ground plane and added in some amazing volumetric lighting, some god rays uh, through a particle system done by my amazing friend Patrick Ryan. Uh, and uh, in this video, we're going to dive even further into bringing this scene together. We're actually going to be bringing in our very first asset our very first final asset, you're gonna see a final piece of the puzzle actually be presented in this video. And we are going to uh, bring in some lighting and show how the caustics can light one of those final pieces. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and jump right on in. So to start it off, we have uh, the playground exactly where we left off from the last video. You can find a link to this one down in the description below. Uh, what we're going to do is scroll all the way down to the bottom here where we have our ground and our sphere and we are going to boldly get rid of them. I want to give myself plenty of space here uh, so that I can uh, pop back in and join y'all and talk to you all. And uh, what we're going to do is load in our first uh, of our final assets, okay, for this. Uh, so the way that this is going to work is we're going to use uh, the Babylon Scene Loader. There is another video that we've done about how to bring in external assets into Babylon that you can check out. There's a link for that in the description below as well, so check that one out. So we're going to say Babylon.ScenLoader.ImportMesh. And what we're going to do is, uh, we don't actually, you know, honestly need to give this a name. Uh, we're going to name it inside of the function itself. Um, and so uh, we're going to just give it a URL. Now I am going to cheat a little bit. Uh, we have uh, a piece of, uh, of what we're going to use in the future here, but I'm going to grab actually everything up to this part of the URL. Uh, and I'm going to copy it right in here, uh, if it will actually let me paste. There we go. Okay. And so uh, then we're going to advance here, and I'm going to do more quotes and give it the actual name of what we're looking for, which is underwater ground, if you didn't already catch that from that base color we looked at. Uh, and then we're going to add it to the scene. And then what I'd like to do is I'm going to uh, add a callback function. So in the loader, we do have the option for a callback function. So when the mesh is loaded, it's a function that will run uh, after the, the model's been loaded. And that's important for us. Uh, what we want to do is we want to pass in a variable of new meshes. So whatever meshes are actually loaded. Okay, so new meshes. And then we're going to pop this down here. And just so that we can clearly see it, uh, we're going to say new meshes. So this is uh, the dictionary, the array, <laughs> depending on the world that you come from, uh, of meshes that were returned, uh, that were loaded. And we're going to say dot name. I'm going to give this a name and I'm going to call it underwater uh, ground. Okay. And then the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new variable called child meshes. I can type. And what we're going to do is we're going to say new meshes, and I'm taking the very first instance in this array, which is the only thing that's being returned. Actually, there's, there's only one. Uh, and then we say get child meshes, child meshes. And uh, there is, a, it a, it's asking for, if we hover over this, it's asking for um, some kind of special consideration. Uh, uh, are there, do you want the direct descendants only? And for us, that's not true. We want basically all descendants. Okay. And so we're going to say, oops, that's going to be uh, children. There we go. Uh, so that's going to be the child meshes. So we're basically searching through the meshes that are returned, everything that's been returned to say, give me all the meshes. That's basically it. Give me all your meshes. Okay. And so uh, then what we're going to do is we're going to create a little for loop here, a uh, little JavaScript for loop. And we're going to say var i is equal to zero while i is less than child meshes dot length 
we're going to then loop through and iterate on i until it is no longer uh, less than the length of the meshes array. Okay, so in this, this is very, very simple. I want to say child meshes, and I want to take the instance number, which is i in this case, and I want to say dot layer mask is equal to one because this is a final asset here, and we want to make sure that it is set to the main camera view, not that texture camera view. Uh, okay, so let's go ahead and actually hit play and see what happens. Ta-da! No caustics, a random black plane. We do have the god rays, but clearly something isn't right here. So what's not right is, well, there's no material assigned to this mesh. And as we know, the caustics are a node material. And so we actually have some work here to do because this is actually a PBR material, but as of the recording of this video, the node material doesn't support PBR. And so we actually have to do a bit of conversion of the PBR material and convert that into uh, the standard material space, okay? And the Blinfong space. And so that's what we're gonna do right now. We're actually going to create the lighting, create the material that incorporates the lighting, which Remember, for us, the lighting is actually the caustics because it's being projected from a light. And we're going to create the lighting and the material for this live. But we have the textures. We just need to create the material. So we've spent a lot of time together in the Node Material Editor, and we're going to continue to do some more of that. You can open up a new tab now and go to nme.babylonjs.com. Of course, NME stands for the Node Material Editor. And we're going to get a fresh session and then we're going to just basically dive right on into creating the uh, lighting for this uh, ourselves, okay? So the first thing that we're going to do is we're gonna separate out the uh, vertex output. We're gonna put that over here from the fragment output, okay? So these two nodes, we're just gonna bring those over here a bit, something like that. And let's start with the normal, okay? So this mesh comes in uh, with, a mesh has a normal. Uh, we would like to disrupt or perturb that normal based on a normal map, based on our own normal texture, okay? And we actually have that normal texture right up here, which we'll use in a second. So whatever is comes with the mesh, we would like to uh, perturb that with this one, okay? So here's how we're gonna go about doing that. We are going to go to perturb normal. There is a node called perturb normal. And we're gonna bring out this perturb normal and we'll zoom in nice and close. Now the perturb normal is looking for a couple of things. It's looking for the world position. We actually have that up here, okay? So we can connect the world position of the mesh into uh, the perturb normal. And it's looking for world normal and world tangent. So we don't actually have those out. However, what we can do is just drag from here and it will, Oh, I lied, we can't do that. Okay, all right, something that we definitely need to consider in the future. So instead what we'll do is we have the world normal and we're gonna bring out the world normal here and we're gonna connect that right on up into the world normal, boom. And then also we want the world tangent, okay? And the world tangent is of course gonna connect to the tangent. So the next thing, the world tangent there, the next thing that we need is the normal map color, okay? So this is the texture. This is the actual texture that we need. Uh, for the normal. Now I have this up. You can find a link to these three uh, textures in the description below. I'm gonna copy this. We're gonna go back in my texture node. I'm going to turn off embed static texture. And instead I'm gonna offer a place for a link. I'm going to insert my link and hit enter. And now I have a place where I have the uh, normal map. And of course, I can then drag this right into the perturbed normal. And now the output of this, of course, will be the perturbed normal. It's the original normal disrupted basically or pushed and, and pulled by uh, this uh, normal map. Okay, uh, and so now what we wanna do is we actually want to uh, start to plug this into some lighting, okay? So we're gonna go grab a light node. Now the light node by default comes in with considering which, which light do you want? Well, there's different lights where well, we actually want all lights, okay? We want all lights in this scene. Uh, and again, this is gonna be attached to our playground eventually, so we will only have the one light, but we wanna just take into consideration all lighting. 
And there's a couple of things that will look familiar here. So we have the world position. So we're going to connect up the world position. And then we also have the world normal. Now, in this case, we actually want to use the perturbed normal. So we're going to actually take this and, and pop that in uh, right there. Okay, so we have the camera position. So the next thing that we want to look at is glossiness. Okay, now glossiness, we're actually going to um, derive this value uh, and, and modify slightly from the ORM, the roughness map. So we're going to take the roughness map that was done for this PBR material, and we're going to basically do a tiny bit of math on it to kind of convert that into kind of a gloss uh, value. Okay, and so the way we can do that is we're going to need another texture. We're going to bring this out. Uh, I'm going to go get the ORM map for this. I'm going to copy it and we'll go turn off embed static texture and where it gives us the link, we'll embed that, hit enter, and there's our ORM map. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go get the POW node. The POW node, of course, uh, if you are not familiar with it, actually, uh, what it does. If, by the way, if you didn't know this, um, you can actually hover over uh, the different nodes and it will tell you uh, the different description of kind of what they do. So this says the outputs the input value multiplied by itself, the number of times equal to the power input exponent of the power, basically. Okay. Uh, and so uh, what we can do is drag this out. And for the value here, we are going to pass in G. Now, why G? Because ORM stands for Occlusion, Roughness, and Metallic. And we, again, want that roughness map. So RGB, ORM, of course, roughness maps to G or green. So we're going to take the green value and we're going to pipe that into uh, the value of POW. And then we're just going to drag out a float here. And we're just going to call this um, Gloss POW. Yeah, we'll call it Gloss POW. And uh, what we're going to do is give that an initial value of 3.4, okay? And the next thing then that we're going to do is we're going to actually connect that right on into the glossiness, okay? So of our, of our light node. So we have this and we're going to take that POW and it goes right into glossiness. Uh, we also are going to pull out something called gloss power. This is just a float. And we're going to give this a value of 64. And then for us, we can set that to a constant. Uh, that's not something that we're going to need to revisit. And then lastly, it's asking for a diffuse color and specular color. And we're actually going to drag out a color three. We're going to leave it as white. And we are going to drag that into the specular. So now at this point, what we have is we have basically lighting set up uh, based on a perturbed normal and the roughness being passed into kind of the glossiness factor. Uh, okay, so the next thing now is that we want to take uh, some of these values and we want to change them based on some gradients, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to drag on it out two gradients. So rather than saying, hey, we want shadows to be pure black, we can change our shadow color, or hey, rather than having our highlights be, you know, pure white, say we can change our highlight or specular color, excuse me. Um, and so we can have some control over that, okay? So the first thing let's do is let's go take this gradient node right here and let's add a new step to it. So there's three of them. And the first one, let's give the first one a value of 53, uh, 53 and 47. Perfect. And then uh, the second one here, let's give that a value of... 98, 94, and 85. Good. And we're actually going to drag uh, this one, the middle one, all the way down to 0.35 on here. Let's see if we can get that to about 0.35 there almost. There we go. Okay. And then the last one here, uh, we want actually, you know what? We're okay with that one being white. However, rather than having that be uh, a one, let's drag it down to like a 0.83, I think is about right. 
Perfect. And this one's going to function as our uh, gradient for our diffuse output. So we're going to take the diffuse output and pipe that into the gradient. Now, in this case, notice that I'm dragging out a vector three, that's the purple line, and I'm going to connect it into the yellow, which is a single value or a float. And I can actually do this because what we're going to do is we're just going to take um, the red value. And in this case, uh, that, that works perfectly fine for us. So we can just use the red rather than trying to split this apart and then take the red, we can just pipe it right in and use the red value. So that's perfect. Uh, okay, and so for this gradient, we're gonna have two steps. The first step uh, is going to be, uh, yeah, zero, 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 that's great. And we're gonna use this one for the specular highlights. Um, what we'll do is we'll call uh, this one, we'll give this kind of a different color. Um, let's do 44, and 49 and say 69, I think would be good. There, give it kind of a blue color. Okay, so what do we have here? Uh, we need to connect the specular output into this specular gradient here. And the next thing that we're going to do is we're gonna grab another texture. So I'm gonna grab a texture node. I'm gonna bring that out. I'm going to grab my base color. I'm gonna grab the whole thing this time. Go back to our node material and turn off embed static texture where it says link. I'll paste that in and we're bringing in now the, uh, the base color. And so now what I'm gonna do is go grab a multiply node. I'm gonna bring out the multiply node. By the way, I'm going through this kind of fast, some of this lighting. Uh, one of the reasons for that uh, is w Patrick uh, has actually done a really good job uh, uh, in the past with some videos explaining in detail uh, how lighting works in the node material. And so I'm gonna to link to those videos as well in the description. Uh, so please take a chance to check this out. If any of this is confusing or we're going through this too fast, definitely uh, trust his judgment on it, uh, uh, his teaching on it and go check out those videos. This definitely will be worth your time for sure. Uh, okay, and so uh, what we're gonna do is take the uh, RGB and pass that in here. And then we're gonna take the gradient, pass that in here. And then we're gonna go grab an add node. So now basically what we have is we're taking the, um, you know, the diffuse color coming out based on the light, the caustics, and we're passing that to a gradient and then we are multiplying that against the base color, okay? And so now what we're gonna do is take the specular highlights and add that to it. Okay, so it's looking good. Now there is one more component, one more variable we need to take into consideration before we can kind of pipe this into the fragment output. And that is that our scene has fog. So we're gonna bring in a fog node because we want our material to take the fog, to be uh, affected by the fog. We want that to be a part of the uh, equation. It would be weird if our ground plane was not affected by uh, the fog. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take the output of this add node and we're going to go all the way over into input. And then it's looking for world position and you know that we have that. We've used it several times before. So we'll actually go grab our world position, bring that over into the fog. And then what we're going to go do is we're going to take this fragment output and hook it right up. And now watch what happens here. We actually have the ground plane texture and you can't exactly see it here super easily, but this will be affected by the fog and the caustic, the caustic lighting. Uh, and so what let's do is let's clean this up a little bit. We're gonna get rid of this. And then I'm going to save this as a unique URL. Okay, and I have that now available. So let's jump back to the playground at this point. What we're going to do is after our for loop, we are going to go create uh, a material, okay? So we're gonna say, I want a new variable. I'm gonna call it ground mat. I'm gonna say, this is gonna be babylon.node material. This is similar to what we've done with the caustics. Parse from snippet async. And I want to bring in Remember, it's everything other than, here we go, everything other than on the, uh, the right side of the first hash, everything on the right side of the first hash, okay? So that is now the material that we just created for the ground plane, okay? And now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to say scene, 
Oh, you know what I've done wrong? I know what I've done wrong. I've made my mistakes with parentheses in the past. You know it. There we go. Okay. And I am going to say I want to do uh, attach the scene. So give the context of the scene there. And then uh, now what I want to do is I want to say then, and you again, hopefully have seen this before, I have node material. And that is going to then go to this bit of code here, which we can uh, basically do an operation now. So we have now the node material uh, that's been created and we want to give it a name. And my name in this case, I want to call it underwater. Uh, actually, let's just call it ground material. Let's keep it simple. Ground material. Keep it nice and simple. Okay, and then what we're going to do is I want to say scene.getMesh by name, okay? Uh, I'm going to look specifically for ground because that is what my asset is called. And then I'm going to say I want the material of that to be equal to node material, in this case, this right here. And so now, when I hit play, if all goes well, we should see the ground plane on this and then affected by the caustics. Are you ready? And there we go. Caustics on a ground plane. It's coming together. The demo is coming together. I am so excited for you to check out the next video. This is so powerful already and I cannot wait for you to see the culmination of what happens with our mystery demo. I hope you've enjoyed this video as well as the last ones. Thank you so much for joining us in this journey. This has been video number eight. The last video of the series is upcoming. I can't wait for you to check it out. If you haven't already done so, I'd hope that you consider subscribing to this channel so you don't miss any future updates. Thank you so much for checking it out and we'll catch you next time.